With the world's oceans warming, underwater sanctuaries and sea life are in danger. In the US, the coral reefs in the south of Florida are especially under threat, with the water consistently reaching high temperatures. Much of the coral life there has already died off. Now some environmentalists are trying to save what they can by building nurseries and using cold storage technology. DW's Ines Pohl went to Key West to find out more. The brilliant white of the corals might look pretty, but it is a sign of decay and death. Several times a week, members of the Coral Restoration Foundation check the condition of the nurseries where they breed corals. When they have reached a certain size, they are planted in the damaged reefs to ensure their survival. Our team has poured our hearts and soul into building this nursery up over the last two years. Um, this was this is our newest nursery, kind of our baby, our, our little our project. It's um, you know really heartbreaking to see years and years of work be derailed in the matter of a few days. But Bailey and her team don't give up. In exceptional cases, they try to save what they can. So when we're pulling these corals out, uh, we did it from our nurseries, uh, through, through all of the nurseries throughout the Keys. And so we just cut those corals off of the coral trees that we have, put them into crate. From there, they are placed in large containers that are brought ashore by boat to cold storage facilities. Hopefully we can hold them there for the rest of the summer, but the goal is to bring them back to our nursery setting at the end of the summer once temperatures cool down. They are so stressed and between the bleaching and the temperature and the transport to there, it's probably gonna, gonna be a survival thing for the next three months until we can get them back in the ocean. Corals have been bleaching in response to rising temperatures for a long time, but this year the situation is extreme. Because it was so hot, so early, the bleaching period is very long and many corals will not be alive when temperatures drop again. These animals are hundreds and hundreds of years old and they can, they can die in a matter of days or weeks. Coral reefs are one of the most vital and biodiverse ecosystems that we have on this planet. Although temperatures may drop a bit in the fall, it's only a matter of time before they rise again and become life-threatening for corals in the boiling oceans. Climate change is no longer a theory here in South Florida. Its deadly force can be seen everywhere. Joining us now from San Diego is Jennifer Smith, an oceanographer who specializes in coral reef ecology. Uh, what's exactly at stake here when it comes to these massive die-offs? Yeah, I mean, coral reefs are incredibly important for human societies globally. They are one of these living biodiversity hotspots, despite the fact that coral reefs occupy less than 0.1% of the Earth's surface. They're home to over 25% of all of the species that live in the ocean. They also are incredibly important for generating revenue. They're estimated to be worth around $30 billion annually in terms of the revenue they generate from tourism and fisheries. They're incredibly important for generating food for many communities around the world in the tropics. Um, and there are also just these living, natural, massive geologic barriers that grow up towards the surface of the ocean and they prevent waves and erosion from reaching the coastlines in many tropical areas around the planet. Uh, Jennifer, what about the, um, the, this, these coral nursery projects that we featured in our report? Can they make a real difference, do you think? Yeah, I mean, right now we're seeing kind of unprecedented warming associated with global warming, as well as an increase in the intensity and frequency of El Nino events, which can cause catastrophic losses to coral reefs. So I think um, the community, the scientific and conservation communities more broadly are looking at all kinds of ways that we can implement to try to save, restore, recover reefs globally. Um, these coral nurseries are a massive effort to try to transplant and outplant corals in places where they have died. Of course, um, if the cause of the loss or the death doesn't go away, we need to look into other potentially more extreme solutions. Um, and a lot of groups are interested in trying to find thermally tolerant corals and to use those to do the restoration efforts. Um, so, you know, at this point, we're trying to do everything we can to ensure that corals are around for future generations. I hope so. Uh, tell me more, though, about uh, these extreme 
solutions, what they would entail exactly? Yeah, I think the, the groups in Florida and around the world are trying to use cryopreservation where we can freeze um, genetic entities of corals to be able to have access to these in the future in case we do see catastrophic losses. Um, looking in the environment to find places where corals naturally exist, where water is really, really warm. In shallow lagoons, you can see water temperatures, you know, in excess of 30 degrees Celsius and corals are just doing fine. So if we can use kind of these naturally adapted populations for our restoration efforts, that's something that we think will be really successful. Um, other people are looking at it, possibly, you know, shading reefs during extreme um, th warm water events um, to reduce the UV exposure to kind of help them weather the storm. Uh, people are looking at pumping cold water from from uh, the depths to kind of cool um, reefs in a, a localized environment. You know, a lot of these solutions aren't really scalable, but, you know, for um, really special places, maybe they are worth the time and investment. It's definitely a lot of uh, work uh, to fix something that uh, we uh, broke. <laughs> yeah, I mean, ultimately, I think we know <laughs> what we need to do. And the first thing is getting over our greenhouse gas emissions problems and finding sustainable solutions for not just coral reefs, but for the planet more global, more, more generally. <laughs> Thank you very much for chiming in today, oceanographer Jennifer Smith talking about the health of coral reefs and some solutions there. Great to hear. Thanks for having me.